meeting to order this evening. Sound check. Uh, my name is Mike, my name is Mike Valancourt. I am the acting chair this evening, as our uh, regular chair Josh Carver was unable to attend. Uh, first, I'd like to deal with approving minutes of, of the past few meetings. We've held off on on doing that. Um, first minutes in order to be approved are from the meeting of May 23rd, 2017. If folks have had an opportunity to review those minutes, uh, and assuming there aren't any changes, I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Great. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? All right, that is unanimous. Uh, we can next move to approve the minutes of the June 27th, 2017 meeting. Uh, seek a motion to approve those. Move to approve. And we have a, another second? A second. Okay. Yes, we Discussion? Amendments? Just an observation that all these minutes were provided previously to the members of the board. And that we've all had an opportunity to look at them, not just the one that we're about to vote on, but the, the first one and the subsequent ones. Uh, good point. Good point. All in favor of approving the minutes from the June 27th meeting? Very good. On to the minutes of the July 25th, 2017 meeting. Uh, do we have a motion to approve those? So moved. Okay. And a second. I second. Very good. Any discussion or amendments? Seeing none, all in favor? Great. Again, this is unanimous. And finally, the minutes of the August 22nd, 2017 meeting. Uh, motion to approve? So moved. Okay. And, <coughs> and a second. I second. Okay, thank you. Discussion or amendments? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? That again is, I think that was unanimous. Did I see everybody? Yeah, I'm, I wasn't there, so I'm not going to vote on it. Okay, okay. But I think we saw. So that's an abstention? You you abstain? Abstain? Yes, okay. abstaining. One abstention. Uh, four in favor and one abstention. Uh, we do not have any old business this evening, so we'll move directly to new business to hear the request of Zach. Pet Singer, uh, representing the owners of 2 Dearborn Drive, map U22, lot 1, to expand their non-conforming single-family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. I will turn to our code enforcement officer to, uh, to give us some information on the request. Sure. Mr. Petzinger came into my office a couple months ago for a building permit to expand uh, one side of this house. Uh, you can see on the plan that there's a bump out in the middle of the house. Basically, they want to square the house off by infilling the two corners. One of those corner infills does not meet the required setback to Scott Dyer Road. Uh, but in order to infill that, uh, you're not getting closer to the property line, you're just infilling in an area it doesn't meet current setbacks. So you're not becoming more non-conforming, just infilling in a non-conforming location, which brings us to section 19.43B4, expansion of a non-conforming structure. And, and Mr. Petzinger completed the application, is here tonight to present it. Very good. Any questions uh, from the board, at least initially, from Mr. McDougal, before we open this up to the applicant? Seeing none, um, Mr. Petzinger, you'd care to present on that? There. Very good, yes. We'll, yeah, we'll want you on the uh, microphone for recording purposes. Uh, bear with me, I'm not sure exactly, I haven't done this before. Um, but exactly like Mr. McDougal said, just looking to fill in those two corners, single floor only. Uh, if you're inside, the kitchen is 
along the Scott Dyer side, and then they used a little bump out for a small dining room table, and the idea would be able to give them a much bigger living kitchen area instead of the odd way they have to walk through it now. Um, initially, when we put the plan together, we were afraid about getting too close to Dearborn, but that, that was the original survey reason, to show that we're going to be within those setbacks. And then when I brought that to Ben, that was when we also realized that though we're not getting any closer to Scott Dyer, we're in those in the original setbacks. So just looking to come six feet out and then now go across the whole way. So do we have a plan that shows the setback from Scott Dyer? I see the setback from Dearborn. So the original survey, like I said, that was where we just, I had to make sure that they would get that original corner, uh, but I didn't have, I didn't have them do the exact measurements. I have, uh, I attached, I mean, what I, what I measured it as, and then if you actually put a tape on the, uh, or a ruler on the plan, you can see that it, if anything, it's actually, I think, a little bit further away by the time it gets to that corner because it's not parallel to Scott Dyer. It, it actually grows a little bit further away. But it's around 29 feet from the road itself. And so the new corner would actually be 29 feet plus a few inches just because mm -hmm. to keep them parallel with the house. And so there's a 30 foot setback on that? It's a 40 foot setback on Scott setback. Dyer. Okay. So as you pointed out, Ben, they're well, they're kind of well within the setback to begin with, right? Yeah. Yes. They uh, maybe a, a third of the house is the, on the on the Scott Dyer side of the house. Probably a third of the house is within that setback. The setbacks increase for different types of roads. The busier the road, the larger the setback. And Scott Dyer is considered one of the busier roads, even though this lot is considered to be in the Dearborn subdivision. It's still affected by the Scott Dyer setback. So what is the setback from Scott Dyer? 40 feet. So is that for when Cablesmith decides to put a six lane road? <laughs> uh, just, I, I just think it's, okay. it just has to do with planning and yeah. scale and the theory of, uh, I think it's more of a planning concept of keeping houses a little further away from busier roads and making less busy roads a little cozier. I think it's a, a planning concept. So like you said, you basically have to tear the whole house down anyway, because so much of the house is within that 40 feet. Ben, can you show us in the code the section that you talk about the 40 feet? Yeah, are you at page 72? That's cool. That's correct. I'm in section, uh, let's see. It's the RC zone, section 19.63. And then moving to the table in section E. You can see the front setbacks for arterial, arterial streets is 40, collector and rural connector streets are 40, feeder streets are 30, local and private streets are 20. And the back of the ordinance. Uh, so you're looking at the most modern code book, which is September. 13, 2007. My version is November 5th, 2016. Okay, so we'll go off the pages off of <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to keep up with <laughs> the number of ordinances coming out, but your, yeah. your, your ordinance is up to date as far as this application is concerned. So basically, the, the, the addition will be, the sidewall of the addition will be parallel to the road as it is now, so they're actually not increasing their nonconformity. 
Correct, and it's even a little better than that. The house is slightly tilted in that direction. Okay. So, so the so the addition is actually getting further away from Scott okay. Dyer. But the whole thing is within it. Only the only the side that's closer to Scott Dyer, the second corner, is right. well past the forty feet. Right. That whole second corner is within the setback from Scott Dyer. Yes. Okay. Sorry. What is the dimension of that, Zach? Is it six by ten? The two corners are approximately six by eleven. Six um, by eleven. Yeah, each one of them. So they're just okay. under like thirty-five feet and. The middle is about 12 feet, 6 by 12. So that's where we're just going to go 6 feet out and go all the way across. So Aesthetically, it'll make the house look a lot better because right now the bump out doesn't fit the style of the home anyway. Okay. So it's a one-story addition, one story. 66 square feet of, of non-conforming of non because the other, the other addition on the plan is conforming. Yeah. So the existing bump out is conforming and then the other corner is conforming. So it's just the corner of about 36 square feet or so that is the issue close to Scott Dyer because then once I get past that and even though I'm tearing down the bump out we're, we're going to be building it to just clean and fresh. Can you help me with the language of the last sentence in paragraph whatever it is B4 on page 39 of my uh, 2016. <coughs> Last sentence of the first paragraph. Right, we're we're not increasing nonconformity here. It says in no case shall the structure be enlarged so it increases nonconformity. Okay, and why not? Because the nonconformity is the distance from Scott Dyer. And so we're moving further away from Scott Dyer. The only way we'd be increasing the nonconformity is if we we're moving closer to Scott Dyer. I understand that the edge of the building is moving away, but the whole building, I mean, that whole is nonconforming. Aren't you increasing? You, you it, are enlarging the structure. Increasing the amount that is in the non-conforming part of the law. That is true, but there, there's a specific definition of okay. increasing non-conformity, okay. and it, it, it's very specific in the glossary uh, when non-conformity deals with a dimensional requirement. Right. Right. That's how it operates. Okay, and where's that? Uh, it's, it, it, let's see. The it, alphabetically, I believe it's increase of nonconformity. H I. Yeah. In, increase of nonconformity of a structure defined. Yeah. I guess the point is the linear extent means that's the operative verbiage here. Is that am I correct? I think you're right. No further increase in the linear extent of the nonconformance. Is that correct? Right. Because it extends uh, quote no further into the required setback area than does any portion of the existing non-conforming structure. Okay. So when it says enlarged, it means enlarged so that whatever wall is being enlarged doesn't bring it closer to the, doesn't increase the 
lack of adequate than your footage. Right. Yeah. Right. The the deficiency that we have here is the setback to Scott Dyer, which currently houses approximately twenty nine. Right. So he could not come in under this provision if he was asking for anything less than twenty nine. Yep. That'd be a variance. Yep. Um, and Mr. Petzinger, as, as a builder on this, you've looked at the slope of the land, potential for soil erosion. Mm -hmm. You know, septic system is not an issue uh, because we, we're on sewer. But are there any concerns you have about any of that? The, the lawn is really level, and there's just some small shrubs right there. And I, I know we keep saying it, but the minimal of this six feet in comparison to the lawn, there's nothing major that needs to be moved, and there's nothing in the ground. There's the water and the electric and everything are all fed through different parts of the house, so we won't even have to move or worry about any of that um, as far as digging or, or going in. And I'm not looking to do a massive foundation. We're going to build it uh, after I spoke with Ben a month or two ago. The existing bump out is on 12-inch uh, piers, so we're going to match that same style because it'll just be so it'll be a total of six 12-inch piers that it sits on. So we're not doing a major amount of excavation or removal. I uh, don't need any big equipment at all. So we won't have any <coughs> problems. Any further questions for uh, the applicant? Mm -hmm. All right. Seeing none, uh, thank you. Absolutely. And uh, any uh, commentary or thoughts from any of our other attendees here this evening? Ben, did you receive any? Did you receive any emails or I did, uh, comments? I didn't receive any correspondence on this. Seeing. Uh, no, no further uh, interested parties commenting on this. We'll close the public portion of the meeting and the board can engage in its discussion of the merits of the application. Thoughts from members of the board? My impression is that we've had a pretty full discussion of this. I appreciate John's comments on the on the definition of um, enlarging nonconformity because I know that some codes do read a little bit differently, but I think the, the language in, in that glossary section for, for the town of Cape Elizabeth is pretty clear. If I can interject, Ben, it would be helpful to me if this has come up before I'm sufficiently easily puzzled without having to be <laughs> um, somewhat intentional. Um, if when you have something either in your presentation or in the, uh, in the, in the text, there's not too much trouble, if you could just reference the nature of the nonconformity so that when we're considering, a, in this case, a nonconformer single bed in the dwelling, nonconformity because it's both. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Other thoughts, comments, suggestions from the board? Right, it strikes me that we are probably moving toward a motion to approve Mr. Petzinger's request uh, representing the owners of 2, two Dearborn Drive, Map U22, Lot 1, to expand and on performing single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Any member of the board is so inclined um, to make that motion. So moved by Mr. Graver. Seconded. Second. Great. Discussion. Again, I think we've already discussed this. Uh, so seeing no additional discussion, um, all in favor of the application. Very good. Uh, 
uh, I will read through the uh, proposed findings of fact. Uh, one, the applicants are the owners of 2 Dearborn Drive, map U22, lot 1. The names of the applicants are listed in the proposed findings of fact, and I'm not going to try to pronounce them. The subject lot is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. Uh, additional findings of fact, one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soil suitable for septic systems, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Two, the proposed structure will not increase the non-conformity of the existing structure. And three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. <coughs> and I would seek a motion to approve the findings and additional findings of fact. Mm -hmm. So moved by Mr. Craver. Second. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the findings of that and additional findings of that. That again is unanimous. Uh, very good. Uh, that was our one item of new business for these, this evening. Thank you everybody for attending. Uh, there is not any new business, then I would seek a motion to adjourn, and I don't think we even usually move on that, so I think we're adjourned, right? It's very good. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.